Chapter 14 is called Problems, Problems, and More Problems. That night, the chickadees had me back again. The boys were annoyed because the girls had hosted me more than they had, but I had to admit, lately the girls' cabins were just a little neater than the boys'. While the girls were doing well and winning me for sleepovers, the boys, particularly the Bob Whites, were ahead in everything else. Everywhere I went, I heard kids buzzing about the activities outside of the nature center. Sam hit a home run, bases loaded. He's awesome, I heard Garth say that morning. Later, I heard that Sam broke the camp record for swimming laps and that he'd scored the highest number of points in the volleyball game. Wow, it was true. Sam was super which made Garth and the other Bob Whites unsweakably happy. Still, the chickadees were far from giving up. Instead of chatting and relaxing before bed, the way most of the campers did, Abby had the girls study their trail skills right there in the cabin. I have to say, Abby sure wasn't lazy. She'd made a big chart showing the signs they'd have to read out on the trail. The counselors would mark the trail, and to score points, the campers would have to follow the markings correctly and reach the end. Whichever group made the best time won. It was actually quite interesting. There were arrows and warning signs and even left and right turn signs, all made out of rocks, sticks, and leaves. I secretly thought that I would be good at following a trail like that. The chickadees seemed tired from a day of swimming, canoeing, hiking, volleyball, but they tried to hard to pay attention. Even so, could anyone beat Super Sam? Just before I out, I overheard Abby take Saya aside. Listen, she said, listen. I was sure Saya was listening, but Abby wanted to make her point. I saw you hanging out with Miranda and Arts and Crafts. If you spill the beans about any of our plans, you'll be betraying the chickadees and all the work we've put in. Are you with us? She asked. Of course, Saya said, but that doesn't mean I'm not Miranda's friend. Fine, Abby added, but right now, being a chickadee comes first. Did you hear that, Humphrey? Saya asked me the next morning as she took me back to the rec room. Abby would probably even be mad at me for talking to you. I'm sorry, Saya, I answered, but I'd never tell a soul. Saya sighed a huge sigh. I'm not a tattler, she said. Of course not, I agreed. I'd love to be Miranda's canoeing partner. I'd love to practice volleyball with her. Saya looked very sad, which made me feel very, very, very sad indeed. But I had more than Saya on my mind because I had just seen Brad come into the nature center. In the past, Brad looked down at his feet most of the time, but today he was looking at people. He wasn't exactly smiling, but he acted more like he was part of the group. Gail came in and a little later and luckily took the seat next to his, although she didn't seem to notice he was there. I was staring at the two of them and didn't even notice Noah standing by Og's tank. Goodness, he startled me. Og, I found your true home, he said softly. You need lots? They need water, lots of it. And other frogs to be friends with. I'll help you, don't worry. I couldn't tell if Og was worried, but I sure was. Og had a friend, me. Did he really need more frogs than water? He did quite a lot of splashing with the water he had. If Og's true home wasn't his lovely take, what was it? I didn't have time to think about Og anymore because Miss Max started the session. I crossed my paws, hoping that this would be the day for a hike. Okay, campers, who's up for a nature hike, she asked. Me, 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 I squeaked. I was sorry right away, because if Noah was around, he might think I wanted to go on a hike into the wild, alone. No one heard me anyways, because everyone was getting up and heading for the door. Luckily, they left their notebooks on the floor. Okay, Og, I told my friend. A hamster's got to do what a hamster's got to do. I grabbed a couple of stickers from my notebook jiggled open the lock that doesn't lock and slid down to the floor. I chose a sticker with the outline of a hand on it. A new friend is close that hand, it read. That went into Brad's notebook. A smile can work magic, said the other sticker. It had a magic wand with a star on it. I checked that into Gail's notebook. Luckily, the nice tall plant made it easy for me to get back to my table. Now my goal was getting across that oh-so-slippery table without sliding into Jake's tank. I thought about it ahead of time, and so I leaned my weight to the left and sailed across the table, narrowly missing the cage and coming to a smooth stop next to Og. I made it, I squeaked. Boing, boing, Og replied. He'd obviously been impressed with my moves. I scurried back to the safety of my cage and took a nice spin on my wheel. When I had calmed down a bit, I glanced toward Jake's cage. I thought about what Noah said and wondered if Jake lived, liked living in a tank. I also wondered if he had a way to get out of his tank, like my lock that doesn't lock. I didn't like what I was wondering. Luckily, it wasn't long before the campers were back. 
Brad and Gail weren't exactly smiling, but I crossed my toes and hoped my effort would pay off. Okay, nature lovers, Miss Max said. Write your observations in your notebooks. Brad grabbed his notebook and quickly saw the sticker there. He stared at it for a while. When Gail opened her notebook, she saw her sticker right away. After she read it, I saw her sneak a quick glance in Brad's direction. He must have noticed because he looked at her, back at her. What? he asked. I didn't say anything, she responded. I thought you said something. Brad shook, Brad shook his head. Nope. Just writing in my notebook. Oh, Gail said. She started making notes, too, then turned to Brad. Is a ladybug one word or two? One word, I think, he said. You saw them, too, Gail nodded. Red ones and kind of orange ones. Did you see the purple bird? What was that called? Brad asked. Gail wrinkled her nose. A purple martin, I think. I have a cousin named Martin, Brad said, which sent Gail giggling. It was good to hear her giggling again. Is he purple, she asked. Nope, he doesn't have wings either, Brad replied. But he is short, Gail giggled again. Because he's only three years old, Brad added, and they both laughed. And so it went. Brad never mentioned his old camp, and Gail had a whole conversation without bringing up Heidi or her parents once. When the session was over, they were still talking as they walked out. Did you see that, Og? I asked my neighbor. Boing, boing, Og answered. Even I was amazed at what we'd just seen and still had some stickers left. Stickers couldn't solve every problem, though. Certainly not the problem the Robins were having, which I learned that night after they returned to cabin after campfire. Listen up, said Miranda. All the other cabins have skits planned for the comedy club, but we still don't have a clue. Yeah, Kayla said, and it counts for a huge part of our camp spirit score. The Robins looked very, very gloomy as they slumped on their bunks. Although, as sad as they looked, I was happy to see that Gail wasn't writing any letters. I knew a little bit about the skit planning. I'd seen the Blue Jays outside practicing a funny little play about looking for bear tracks. The ending was a surprise. I couldn't even tell Og about it. And the chickadees talked about sitting on an invisible bench, which would be impossible, I think. But every time they talked about it, they burst into laughter. Abby was sure it would be a winner. But the Robins still had no skit. What about the invisible bench skit, Lindsay asked. They did that in Scouts last year. Miss Max said another group was already doing it, Kayla explained. That's what we did for being last, Lindsay said. Miranda began to pace. I wish Humphrey could talk. Maybe he'd have some ideas. Better than ours, Kayla agreed. I hopped on my wheel for a spin, which is a hamster's way of pacing. Actually, I didn't have any ideas because I hadn't seen many skits. The girls were silent for a long, long, long time. In fact, the only sound in the room was the squeaking of my wheel going round and round. Hey, Humphrey, could you hold it down? Miranda got up off her bed and came over to my cage. Maybe he wants to help, Lindsay said. Kayla jumped up and came over to my cage. Yeah, we should put Humphrey in our skit. Me and a skit? I'd never been on stage before, and the stage in the hall was very big. Eek, I squealed and dashed into my sleeping hut. Then all the girls gathered around my cage and giggled. Come out, Humphrey, Miranda said in her friendly voice. We need you. When someone says they need me, it's hard for me to say no. I crawled back out and looked up at the smiling faces of the robins. He's so cute, Lindsay said. Who could ever be afraid of a little hamster? Miranda wrinkled her nose. No one's afraid of a hamster. Oh, yeah, Lindsay replied. My mom. We had a hamster named Chip, and he got out of his cage, and my mom started screaming and got up on a chair, like he was a monster or something. My brother and I laughed so hard we cried. Lindsay wasn't crying now. She was laughing, and so were her friends. That's, that'd be funny, Miranda said, if someone was afraid of Humphrey. Then the most amazing thing happened. The girls were, started chattering, and then they started acting things out. Sometimes they agree, and sometimes they disagreed. But... They began to work out a skit that looked pretty interesting until they got to the last part. And that's where Humphrey comes in, Gail said. She was giggling again, and I was glad. You'll help us, Humphrey, won't you? Miranda asked. They can never say no to Golden Miranda. By the time Miss Mac came in for Lights Out, we'd rehearsed the skit several times. The Robins begged her to stay so we could act it out for her. She loved it, but suggested they needed a few more people. Counselor Katie and I would love to help out, she said. The girls all cheered. So where'd you come up with the idea, Miss Mac asked. The Robins all pointed to my cage. Humphrey, they said. Miss Mac smiled. Who else? Later that night, I looked up at the moon through an open spot in the curtains. It reminded me of a big spot, like, like a spot like shining on a stage, a big, big, big stage for a small, small, small hamster. I spun on my wheel for a long time. 
Note to self, when you offer to give someone a helping paw, you'd better mean it because you might end up a lot more involved than you ever dreamed. Chapter 15 is called A Taste of Freedom.